The thing about being trans is that there's this obvious thing that is not right in your life. That you know it takes a lot of courage, it's going to take a lot of courage to like be true to your true self. It's gender. Um, but I think that everybody has the same thing, they just don't know what it's called. It's like just like being really true to themselves or being brave enough to be who they really are or standing up for what they believe or you know all, all these things. Um, that it's just it's it's hard to like follow your heart and to not care what people are gonna say or to let go of fear. Before I transitioned, I was I was completely miserable. I was about to end it all. I was on drugs, trying to stay in my head. Ever since I transitioned, pretty much all that stopped. I I, I just felt more comfortable as myself. <clears throat> and being a trans woman. It's kind of secondary to me, to being a woman. A big point for me was presentation of myself. The ability to see myself as I want to be seen, and that is all-encompassing. So stylistically, um, before, I, I felt very limited. And now, I, I feel like I could dress any way that I want to. I'm not afraid to be you know, exactly who I want to be. Whereas before it was like, or trying to fit into a mold. Just being able to be honest, openly, to family, friends. I, I'm at an age and I've gone through all the things people in my position generally go through to get to the point where you can just be yourself. You know, those that are fortunate enough. You know, I don't really know that I really feel like being trans has brought me Joy and satisfaction, it just feels like that's who I am. It's one of those things where it's, if you, until, you, until you've done something about it, until you've started to change who you are, to really line up with who you are inside, until you've started to take those steps, you don't understand what you were missing previously. Before I transitioned, I would get up in the morning and I would go in the closet, that walk-in closet, and I'd go in, and on one side was all my male clothes. On the other side was my female clothing. And I started getting dressed for the day. And I just had this, this moment of realization. I'm like, I'm putting on a costume. Um, I hid a lot of myself before coming out. And yet when transition happened, and, and I started going through that, all those kind of veneers I had to put on to fit in, being able to let go of that, being able to just be, was liberating. I think just being complete as a person and knowing who I am now and accepting myself and just being accepted by the closest people that are to me, which is, you know, my very close friends and of course my family. And that makes me happy because I don't have to pretend or hide or be someone that I'm not. I am who I am now. It's, it's very liberating to be your own person and be your own person within the career field that you are in. And that's just the, uh, that's the fun of it for me. Well, it brought me joy because I didn't feel like the person I was before was who I really was. I was living a lie, kind of. I knew when I was like really young, like five, um, that I was different. I didn't know how, obviously, I was five, but I didn't fit in. Right, I didn't think the same way I probably should have. Like, uh, you know, my parents tried to get me to do boy things, and uh, they tried to get me to act a certain way. And for the most part, I I didn't fit into what they wanted to mold me into, and I I just felt different and awkward even through like middle school and through high school. I I felt out of place, and sometimes I felt myself doing ridiculous things just to uh, get attention and friends because I didn't know how to do it properly. And it wasn't until I was like 13, 14-ish that I found out uh, how I was different, which is uh, I was trans. You know, we struggle sometimes as trans people to kind of explain what and why and, and get people to understand. But it's like if you've ever been in a situation where you've tried to, to um, convince people that you're something else. If you are trying to 
you know, you, you don't want to cover because you don't have the great job that you think you should have, or this or that. Those kind of things are what it's like for a trans person to live in their birth body. Because you're constantly having to live up to these expectations everybody has of you because of that physical element that really isn't what's there. And it's liberating when you can finally let go of that. I mean, you're, you're letting this big weight off your chest. I think my family has really disappointed me. They weren't supportive and they weren't honest when I was a child. Um, the discrimination has been very difficult. And I think the hardest part would have to be um, just relationships in general. Well, I was fired from a job that I really loved. I was disowned by my family. I haven't seen my baby sister in 12 years. I haven't seen anybody in my family other than my mother in 12 years. Um, I was harassed continuously and repeatedly by the police. I had my identification stolen from me by a border patrol agent in northern Michigan. I've had a lot of violence and a lot of poverty in my life because of it, but that's also a choice that I made, but I didn't make. So, I don't know, being trans in America is fucked up. It's not, it's not a, like, happy, beautiful experience unless you come from privilege and wealth and a family that embraces you going through that process. And I don't, I don't think I speak for all trans people um, and their experiences, but in my own experience, it's, it's been very complicated. I lost half of my family. Um, my whole father's side, biological father's side, I lost that side. Um, and that was actually about four years ago. And they couldn't, they tried to, um, understand and they put up, you know, they put up a fighter face to, you know, try and bear with, bear with me with this whole transition thing, but it just, it, it, grew on them like a cancer and they could not handle it. And so I just decided at a certain point, which is about four years ago, to be like, ah, this, this is not good, but I still want to make it right. And so I, in a way, I look back now and I punished myself um, unbeknownst. And um, I kept going back to that side of the family to, you know, make things right, you know, and try to have them grow with me with this transition for uh, almost, man, it was like almost a year. My grandmother was giving me my hormone shots on my dad's side. And it was cool. It was a nice little bonding experience, you know? So I lost that side of family and it, that really kind of sucks because they raised me for 14 years, you know? Because my, uh, my mother and father got divorced when I was in second grade. So I didn't see much of my mother up until I was maybe 16. And so that has to be, I'd say the hardest thing for me. But within the past four years, I've grown to accept that, you know, I can never make amends with them. They're just too rooted. And, you know, you will lose people in your in your lifetime. And I've, I've lost many people, you know. It's heartbreaking, but I'm still alive and I can still, you know, make a difference and enjoy my life. I don't think any girl escapes hardship if you're transitioning, at least not any kind of hardship. Uh, most of my family accepted me. Uh, in fact, the first person I came out to was my father because I knew he would be the hardest person to tell and he would take it the hardest. And if I can tell him, I can tell anyone. So I told him, and he had the, the same reaction in my head I played over and over again. It was terrible. But that was also a weight off my shoulders. Then I told my job, and I told my best friends, I told the rest of my family, and uh, surprisingly most of them were really accepting. And so I only had issues with like my dad. Uh, my friends were cool too. Um, I was on hormones for a decent amount of time and started pretty young and I, I feel like I passed fairly well and I've never had people come over and say anything bad about me. The closest I've come to having any kind of strife 
in my life due to transgenderism is um, my dad didn't take to it very well, but I have very, I've always had very little contact with him. And so I heard, you know, a, a couple sentences of you know, disapproval, and that was it. That was really it. I never ran into any trouble because, like I said, from early teens um, on, I've always just kind of flew under the radar and I, I made my transition as easy as I could for other people by um, adopting fashions and styles that lent themselves to androgyny. So I was a goth kid for a little while. I was into the industrial music scene for a little while because I could put on these things and people, oh, they, you know, they could write it off as something else. But the more I stuck with it and the older I got, the less they said, oh, this is a phase you're going through. And I got it to the point where I could pay for, you know, transition and name change and hormone therapy and all these things. And people at that point went, eh, you know, she's like, okay, whatever. Well, I got fired from a job in my hometown because I basically transitioned on the job. And I had customers coming in like, who's this freak? You know, basically. And then... You know, I couldn't get fired for being trans, but they made up reasons and customers would, you know, write complaints for reasons that weren't relevant or reasons that weren't actually true, that were fictitious, and they were just trying to get me out of there because they didn't want me, because I was a freak or an outcast. This is one of those things that, that I've been really, really lucky. I know a lot of folks that have had hard roads Mine's actually been quite the opposite. Um, you know, the expression first world problems, that's about all that the, the trans stuff has given me. Um, you know, I was lucky. I was surrounded by a lot of friends that were very supportive and in those kind of early days nurtured me along. And, and you know, they were very supportive and they weren't looking down on it. They were very helpful with it. Um, you know, similarly in my work, when I transitioned, they actually brought in a, um, they brought in a, a, a counselor to actually work with the staff in advance of me coming coming out so they could prepare them so they could understand the issues. You know, so I had a very smooth transition in the workplace. There's some prejudices built into our society against somebody that's trans. Um, just the difficulty of getting a documentation that matches a gender marker can be a real problem. I've had some definitely emotionally challenging experiences. Um, the things which are hard are for me very internal. Um, just adjusting to like my own my own sense of self and how I want to portray myself in the world and put myself out there um, is new and challenging in a bunch of different ways, which I hadn't necessarily expected. Um, my personality changed in ways I didn't expect it to. I think a lot of people before they start transition assume that well, I'll basically be the same person in a different body, and then you know my body and mind will sort of match up the way I think they should. But for me, it was an experience of just, I'm a completely different person. The person who I was before doesn't exist anymore, and I didn't expect that. And that was interesting and challenging and exciting at the same time. But in terms of the outside world, I'm lucky living in Seattle, an incredibly accepting city. I've never had any problem with strangers or people who I've encountered have always been very supportive. All of my friends and family have been very supportive. Every point that I was worried about, which was my family and, um, and mostly um, work, I, I felt like I might, you know, experience some opposition, but none at all. The only hardship I have that I've actually been dealing with has been probably love and relationships because it's just, it's hard to get someone to accept you for being a transgender um, and after that, then it's like, okay, trying to be accepted for being in the adult industry. If they accept one, they're not going to accept the other. And so it's very hard to find someone that will accept you for both, but that knows you as a person, not your performer. You know, people who know you as a performer see you and expect you, and they want to see that performer all the time, and they don't realize that that's another side of you, and that's for the camera. I wouldn't say I haven't tried 
but I think right now I accepted just living my life and sticking to my career and focusing on that and right now that's you know my priority in life is just making myself happy and right now the people they think that a trans girl so that's all that that person has going on in their life is being trans you know it's like uh, they they have no concept of like does this person like to read books you know what kind of movies does this person like uh, where does this person come from you know like what does this person like to do in their spare time does this person play any sports they just think this person is trans period that's the only thing but I do sense that sometimes the people don't see trans girls as like real people they just see them as like this painting of this of this trans thing. You know, within data, you talk about the idea of adding an attribute to something. And each one of those labels is really just a label. It's something you do to kind of, depending on context, try to narrow in to help explain the story better, to help give an understanding to the person listening and talking with you, to get a grip on it. Sometimes the message you need to communicate is, dude, I'm a woman. You know what I mean? I'm no different than any other, any other woman you're going to deal with. I'm as temperamental or as, you know, thoughtful and caring or any of those things that you're going to think of for a genetic woman. If I'm dealing with somebody that doesn't accept me on that level, then that has to become the focus of language. It becomes about, you know, yeah, I'm a woman. I feel like if you're, like, actually trans, like if you're an actual trans woman, then you always prefer the term woman. Trans woman doesn't bother me if you're using it in the context of describing a woman. I definitely don't find any of the terms upsetting. Like I'm, it's it for me. It's like entirely the intent which someone says something. I know. I feel like the whole trans asterisk umbrella has become so opening and inclusive as to almost feel like I'm not sure which of these words is actually best used to identify me within it. I consider myself to be a woman, and I consider myself to be trans, and I consider myself to be human. There, there are some that. I feel I would not like to be called, but I understand that like not everyone feels that way. I think that labels are important to help define um, the way that we see ourselves and see each other, as well as know what we're not. But definitely some can be used hurtfully, and I think that's where it gets a little dicey sometimes, because some words are um, definitely offensive. Like, to me, like if someone called me a tranny, I would be very, very upset. Um, especially if it were done in a hurtful way. I mean, if it's just joking around, I might still be like, I don't know. <laughs> I've never really cared too much about semantics. Like, I, I'm more generally concerned about where people are at when they make those statements. You know, like, I, I generally judge someone based on the kindness and intention of what they're saying and all these words are just kind of made up words that we use to describe a feeling. I'll choose a word to describe myself or the situation I'm going through based on how I feel the comfort levels of the people around me are. You know, so like with mainstream culture, I'll just use the term transsexual or transgendered, and in queer communities, I'll use the term gender queer. What really ticks me off is that. It's other transgender people that are more anal about terminology than the general public. And to be honest with you, there's so many different terminologies now that I don't think the general public knows what to think of us. I know that there are certain people that like they're, they think this word means this and this and this, and this word means this and this and this, and this word means this and this and this, and you can't use one word for the wrong thing and they get like really like, you know, torn up about it. I used to go in chat rooms and I would call myself shemail, which I still identify with. I identify with trans, shemail, whatever. And the other girls were so harsh and so cruel. You know, I am all kinds of different names, but however people want to refer to me as, as long as it's not a male pronoun, I'm good with it. I don't really care too much about the words, you know. If someone calls me like a shemail or tranny or whatever, like it doesn't really bother me. Um, uh, I guess I've always referred to myself as transgender. I I don't take offense to any word at all, whatsoever. Not even context. Um, I'm one of those assholes that just believes in words purely for the sake of words. Just 
on their own merit as existing as words. So nothing, I take offense to nothing. But if you have to say he, she, say whatever you want. When people ask me, like, what am I? First off, I'm a human. But um, I'm a transsexual woman. I don't get uh, my panties in a wad over any of them because people are going to say what they say. Words don't hurt me at all. Um, actions are much more, uh, have much more weight to them. And in terms of having any kind of ill effects towards me or, or positive effects. Um, w like words like transgender or tranny or female or what have you, it, it's, they're just words, but there are people who take offense to that. And, you know, so there is a time and place for certain words and phrases. A lot of people, especially men, they they use the, the term transvestite. I wouldn't be categorized as a transvestite because, you know, you think of the person on Rocky Horror Picture Show, you know, just dressing up in drag, basically, and I live my life like this. This is me 24-7, and, you know, so I think that's the only word that I don't like. Transsexuals are not cut from the same cloth as, say, cross-dressers or transvestites and I don't like being grouped with them particularly. I have nothing against cross-dressers and transvestites but uh, I don't like the fact that since we're grouped a lot of the general population can't tell the difference and that bothers me a lot. I mean they already have trouble grasping uh, the ability to change your gender and what transsexual or not that they throw in cross-dressers and transvestites that go around calling themselves trannies and, and trans women when they're not. It just It's confusing people. You know, I'm not the kind of person that gets bent out of shape over language. Because, and here's the challenge, we as a community have done a very bad job of explaining who and what we are. Because there are so many voices. This is not a unified chorus of this is our experience. We've all got something different. And so, you know, some people will get upset because people don't use the right language. We have to look at it as a learning opportunity. When I find somebody that, that clearly isn't being malicious, they just don't know, to be able to teach them about the language, to be able to walk them through and help them understand and maybe be better the next time they meet somebody, to me, that's part of the journey that we have to go through.